Hello and welcome back to Rez Gaming. My name is Hollow and I'm finally talking about talismans again. Back when Rise launched, we made multiple videos to help with the whole talisman grind we were all on, using different methods to farm materials to actually meld, you know, how the talisman system works, the data mined info so you know what's rare and what to actually rebirth. Today, with the launch of PC Rise underway last week, we should be seeing a lot more players now reaching endgame, or at least starting to meld their first talismans. We thought it would be a good idea to come back with a complete up-to-date talisman guide cutting to the chase with the important information that we've learned over the original release. There's over 100 skills in Rise that you can meld onto your talismans and they're actually graded by the devs into different qualities. The higher quality, the rarer it is you'll actually meld that. Plus, what is the best talisman you could meld? You know, which types of talismans should I be melding? That and more will be covered in this video, so let's get started. Now, as this is a complete guide, I'm going to quickly explain the basics of talismans and melding for our new PC players. How do you unlock talisman melding? You must simply reach 5 star village quests or 3 star gathering hub quests to unlock the melding pot. This starts with only basic melds, the rest are then unlocked through high rank progression. There's 5 total melds, reflecting pool, haze, moonbow, wisp of mystery and finally rebirth. To unlock them all you'll need to have reached hunter rank 7 at the gathering hub and to have defeated Nawa the final boss of 1.0. But how do you meld? To meld you need to talk to Kagiro at the market or the guild store in the gathering hub. We'll then need to choose our meld type one of the five. Reflecting pool, haze and moonbow will meld for specific skills while wisp of mystery and rebirth are your random melds. After choosing your meld type though you'll need to hand over materials that reach the amount required and you can go beyond that to meld multiple in one go. These materials can be monster materials, tickets and even other talismans if you're doing rebirth. Generally you'll use monster materials you don't need and I have advice on that in a moment. Once you've got your melds going you just need to progress time so you can finish them and collect them. That means you need to go complete or even fail a hunt. The fastest method for this then is to go to the arena and die quickly. We talked to Utsushi in the gathering hub and picked the Rajang hunt ideally for the fastest fail quest possible after he clobbers us. After your hunt though or failed hunt, go back to the melder and collect your talismans. All right, let's start getting into the real stuff then. Which melding should I do? You should always be using Wisp of Mystery or Rebirth melds. These are random, yes, but your chances of getting a good skill or a well-slotted talisman are much higher than the other three options. The reason behind that is because you cannot roll elemental skills, which are B-grade quality skills with these. Therefore, your odds of getting an A or even S-grade skill are higher because there's less lower quality options to roll. On top of that, Pool, Haze and Moonbow melds have significantly less chance to roll well with the skill level of the thing you're after. Always use Rebirth for your talismans you don't need or want, saving on monster materials, spending 20 talismans that you're never going to use to get 3 new ones that have better odds of being a good talisman. I'll tell you about which skills are actually rare or common to help with that shortly. For our new players though, Talismans can be melded with a variety of decoration slots, up to three total. Those three total slots can be different qualities, the best being three to fit the biggest decorations, or it could be a two slot or a one slot. Now let's talk about the best way to farm talismans. So if you're looking to farm talismans now you've reached end game, or at least end of a 1.0 story, there's going to be one method that's reliable and also the, on the total the most efficient. Now uh, remains the best option for time spent during hunt and the materials you get for it. You not only get high High quality materials for the melts in terms of points per part but also the amount of materials you get for the kill is very high. This means Nawa is the most efficient way to farm materials for melts. Even though her materials aren't the highest point value materials anymore it's because you're killing Nawa in like five to ten minutes that's a solid and reliable option. You can even manage sub five minute kills with a good build and skill making this even more effective. We've made videos on this in the past if you want to check those out but generally I recommend a strong light bowgun build. You see light bowgun saw massive popularity in Rise and the Nawa farm had a huge hand in it. Now let's talk about the data mine and the information we get from that. This is the really important part. During 1.0 the current build of play was data mined. This led to us learning more about how talisman melds actually work, which skills are rarest to meld, the qualities and even your odds of getting specific talismans. It's important to understand you know which skills are rarest or more common so you know what to expect when melding. It'd be terrible if you rebirthed a talisman that was actually very good and very rare because you didn't know. 
Talismans can be melded with up to two skills on it at once, and even multiple decoration slots. The thing is, you can't meld talismans with the best skills and the best decoration slots at once. On top of that, it's also impossible to meld the best skills at their max, so you will never be melding a weakness exploit talisman at 3 out of 3. The best you can hope for in that case is 2 out of 3. However, as I said, you can meld two skills on one talisman, so it is possible that you could get a crit boost level 2 and weakness exploit level 2 on just one talisman. And then you could go on further and get like a 3-1-1 decoration slot on top of that. What I have just described is possible and would probably be considered one of the best talismans out there if you could meld it, but the odds of that happening are, according to the data mine, 1 in 390 billion. So probably not going to happen. What's more viable for a normal non-god RNG person then? That's probably weakness exploit level 2 with no second skill on it and then two decoration slots. Your odds of getting that talisman in particular are 1 in 2,724, basically in less than 3,000 melds, you should see that talisman. My advice is to aim for a talisman that has great slots and at least a useful skill to your build on it. And then you use those slots to decorate important skills on. Now let's talk about skill rarity. As I mentioned earlier, all the skills are graded at different qualities. The higher quality the skill, the rarer it is that you'll meld that. So understanding what's rare and what's common should really help you. This is something we've seen done in other Monster Hunter games. We actually saw the drop chances of face stone types back in world when that was data mined. Now I have made an entire video going over this topic in detail. You can go back and watch that if you want to learn everything. But for this video, I'm going to keep it concise. There are four grades of skills that you can meld. S, A, B, and C. S are, of course, the rarest and least likely to meld, while C are the most common. I put together these four images to display the grades of the skills for your easy referral. Using this, you'll know when you meld, say, a handicraft talisman or maybe a PS up talisman, those are S grade skills that's solid and you don't want to rebirth those. And then if you were to meld level two on one of those skills, that would be a really good talisman. Meanwhile, if you're rolling your 10th Fortify talisman, which is a C grade skill, you know that's common and you're safe to rebirth that unless it has some incredible decoration slots on it. Ultimately, maybe save these images so you can refer to them later when you need to or come back to the video and check again. All right, so that's talisman skills and their rarity explained. What about decoration slots? The best decoration slot you can get on a talisman is this, a three slot, a two slot, and a one slot all on one talisman, AKA the three, two, one. However, if you roll the skill on that talisman that's grade S or A, it is now impossible to get that three, two, one slot. At best, any S or A skilled talisman can roll a three, one, one slot. And that's still pretty damn good. The best three, two, one though, would be a talisman that also has two B grade skills on it. So that's two skills that are at B grade rarity, and then also that three, two, one slot on it. That's important to know in post 3.0 where yeah, we have more decorations, so slots are even more important. But there you have it. That's everything to tell you about talismans that I think is very important. How best to make use of your time melding, what skills you should hold on to, what's reasonable to aim for, and all the decoration slot information too. I hope this has helped you, and if it has, do drop a like on the video so we can make videos like this in the future. If you have anything to add, you can drop it in the comments. But until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye